you very much, Eugenio. Uh, I would like also thanks to Miha with his very inspiring uh, uh, part of this webinar. And uh, let's go and discuss with our guests. And I'm going to introduce you, um, Christina Lolio, who is actually uh, uh, in, uh, present in this uh, roundtable, uh, replacing uh, Silvia Costa. But uh, they, they are working together. They were working together also within the European Commission on Culture. And uh, Christina is an expert on European uh, policies. Uh, then we have uh, Paolo Rumitz. Paolo Rumitz is a writer, traveler. Uh, he was also a former special envoy of La Repubblica in, uh, in the crisis uh, part uh, of Europe, like the Balkans. Uh, then we have uh, David Zoldos. David Zoldos is a Hungarian musician who, after finishing his studies at the Music Academy in Budapest, he starts uh, completely, I would say, a new way of being a professional musician. Uh, and he will, uh, I will invite him to present himself uh, um, before giving the answer to the first question I will give uh, to every participant in the, to the panel speaker. And then we have David de Fankin. Fan David de Fankin is uh, actually, uh, is the principal horn of a Florida Symphony Orchestra. Uh, actually on tour and, and we thank uh, David very much because in uh, his place now it's three o'clock in the morning and he waked up his uh, roommate uh, because they are on tour and uh, David is with us and uh, David is of course also a creative entrepreneur. Then we have Gabriele Centis, a musician, a, a drummer. He was studying uh, of the United States, but he's actually leading the House of Music in Trieste and the music school, Scuola Cinquanta Cinque. So all our guests, you are very welcome. And I will start now with the prelude, is the first uh, series of uh, questions. So, Paolo Rumitz, how do you see today's evolution of the European society? Paolo? You must turn off your microphone. Turn on your microphone. Paolo? Riesci a attivare il microfono? Okay. Uh, so long we don't have Paolo, I will move to Cristina Lolio. Cristina, uh, this is actually the question I would like to uh, ask uh, Silvia Costa, but now you are invited to answer. Which are the European cultural and music policies actually adopted by the European Commission on Culture? Thank you for the invitation. First of all, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you see me? <laughs> yes, you are very welcome. Great support. So first of all, thank you for the invitation. Uh, the, I follow with a great interest to the, the presentation of the team project. And they moved back to me because uh, uh, I have seen that the city of Milan is part of the, of the uh, logos uh, supporting team. And uh, so it brings me back to the years that I, I'm a, 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 I study in Piccolo Teatro di Milano with Paolo Grassi exactly on this subject. So I talked for more than 20 years in the Piccolo Teatro Civic School in Milan, exactly around this subject. May a musician or a, a person playing in theater be at the same time an entrepreneur of himself? Or is it enough to be great or a genius, as Micha told us, in performing? Or we have to add other skills? This is a key subject for the European Union, but it has been as well a key subject for the profession. So in my case, since I was 18 now, so almost 50 years ago, I worked for, uh, for 
putting together, integrating the artistic part with another series of skills. They are part of management, they are part of promotion, but they are part of dialogue between the arts. And uh, only if an artist is able to, to be in dialogue with the, with the society, we may call it the listener or the audience, but in fact is our, is our part of ourselves, which is, which is a citizen. When we put together uh, the artistic profession and our citizenship, this is the magic match that team is working for. That's what uh, the, the music world asked uh, the, the European Union to do. Uh, as you know, the, the specific program provided by the European Union is named Creative Europe. And this Creative Europe uh, was born in, uh, in uh, 2014. Uh, as any European program, it, it lasts for seven years. So a few days ago, two days ago, in fact, the new septennium was approved. So for the period 2021-2027. And uh, in 2014, when Silvia was, uh, was the chair of the cultural committee in the European Parliament, and I've been her, her senior advisor since, since then, uh, the idea was to bring together uh, the audiovisual world, so the, the program called media, with the other, uh, any kind of cultural subject. And they were part of the previous program called culture. This cultural program was very, was split originally in many parts of the archives, books, uh, uh, support for uh, cultural heritage, support for performing arts, but each of these world uh, was very separated from each other. So I go back and I'm picking something that uh, Eugenio De Caro uh, spoke quite quite openly in, in the opening session. So this uh, course to be separated uh, theater from music, uh, uh, intelligent cinema from large uh, mainstream cinema. This has been a terrible uh, situation for everything which is related with culture and art. So that's why in 2014, the European Union decided to unify under a, 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 an umbrella named Creative Europe, everything. At this point, the music world started to study more uh, carefully what the media were doing. Because in the, in the culture sub-program, the, the magic word is cooperation. Any kind of cooperation between uh, three opera theaters or one archive, one architect and one musician, everything was accepted under the precondition to suggest cooperation between minimum three subjects in minimum three countries. But music uh, wanted to go to go further on. I'm too long, uh, Igor. Yes, uh, you have actually three minutes uh, already passed. So okay. You can uh, uh, so I, I end up precise. with uh, I summing up uh, yep. the music world decided to ask for a specific sub team inside culture and he asked the parliament to support a project line called Music Moves Europe trying to go step by step as audiovisual is doing. So to provide a line for training and you are part of this, to support a part for uh, opening to the markets. So to uh, move out from the, the line of uh, cooperation to look for the detail. And that's what Music uh, Moves Europe is for. And then the next time I tell you which is the space for Music Moves Europe in Creative Europe 2021-2027. Thank you very much, Christina. Uh, actually, you already answered partially to the second question I was preparing, I prepared for you. And uh, so we will continue later. Now, so uh, I hope that Paolo Romitz is here with us and I'm inviting him to uh, tell us uh, from his point of view how he sees the today's evolution of the European society. Paolo, are you with us? Paolo? Hello, you can hear me? Yes. Now we can hear you, yes. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, I would like to make some remarks about the main topic of the moment, which is COVID and its uh, uh, consequences in artistic uh, life. Uh, I would like to say that we know fast all about negative effects of uh, this uh, pandemia, which is uh, growing inequality, poverty, fear, uh, racism, uh, loneliness of dying people, uh, social tension, public debt, uh, dismantling of welfare. And uh, another thing that I'm very, very aware is abnormal development of digital means in our life uh, and uh, our thinking in a parallel artificial reality, very exposed to fake news. What we know <clears throat> less is that, uh, uh, is that uh, <clears throat> in any catastrophe, uh, there is included a learning, a warning, uh, an information about what to do in order to find a solution to the problem. So uh, it's an advice to decide the strategies to get out from crisis. And uh, the main message of COVID that we must be able <clears throat> to listen <clears throat> is that the old word is finished and is the time for our generation is finished. Uh, and the time is, is arrived to give uh, possibility to new generation to change the world towards a more clean, green, sustainable world uh, with more solidarity, more community, less Amazon, more local development, more uh, means of communication, new means of communication and new words and a new storytelling. And I think that uh, the youth can be protagonist of this change. Um, they can, are not only uh, uh, there to wait for the change, but they can give the impulse, they can find the impulse for empowering some basic values. When we are confined at home or quarantine, our desire of freedom and space is growing, it's normal. When we are sick of digital, we return to the importance of voice and of silence. If we are sad because of pandemia, uh, our desire of poetry, literature, theater, music, concerts, storytelling is, it turns into something very, very powerful. I think that uh, young musicians will face a growing request in the future of beauty and harmony. We are nostalgic of something uh, new and something old in the same time to change the, the, the difficult moment we are living now. Um, we have, uh, uh, the, the young musicians have in their hands uh, a powerful weapons. I remember when I, I've been working with uh, Ezio, uh, how strong was the emotion we are able to produce in listeners in the theater. The clapping of people at the end of concerts did not only mean that the performance was good, but it meant oh, finally, somebody is uh, explaining, is understanding what we need. So we had finally an answer to our need. And they get out of the theater feeling much, much better than before. 
So I would like, I have only explained what I believe is the, the importance of music in such a very difficult moment of Europe. That's Thank you, Paolo. Thank you very much for your words. And now uh, you were talking about technologies. And this is exactly what I would like to ask Gabriele Centis. Can be the new technologies considered an opportunity for learning new skills and competencies? Also for the young generation of outstanding and emerging musicians or music artists. Gabriele, can you hear me? Gabriele, it seems that Gabriele has also some difficulties. Vicente, can you hear me? Okay. Gabriele. Okay. Yeah. Did you hear my question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, please. And new technologies can be absolutely be considered an opportunity to learn new skills and competencies. The digital world has flattened knowledge often artisan knowledge necessary to the practice of that discipline. Music, photo, video, graphics, painting, everything is a file. Everything can be technically manipulated, modified or realized, more or less in the same way. But at the same time, it is open in the arts expression, new operating system and creative possibilities. Digital technology has lowered and increased the costs and increase the speed and number of production and self-productions, publication and self-publications, promotion and self-promotions. It has opened the opportunities to the musicians to manage all the professional activity by themselves. The web has created a possibility to access an unlimited but not selected archives, data, tutorials, audio and video documents, streaming and fast and direct connection, this condition has changed the cultural industry and also training paths. Nowadays, time for accessing information, concepts, and application about instrument practice are set to zero. In the past, they would have required a lot of time, a lot of wrong approaches, and articulated work process. The danger is to empty the meaning of the information in which its sense, in many cases, is in the same path of its acquisition. The risk, the risk connected to this change is the progressive weakening of the sensory, perceptive, emotional, physics, psychic, social, and artistic experience that it could happen by attending only the virtual dimension. Thank you, Gabriele. So uh, you are just uh, preparing the next uh, question that I would like to uh, formulate to David Zoldos. Uh, and uh, I would like to invite David Zoldos also to present very briefly uh, because the time is running. We have to stay within the scheduled uh, time of the round table. So, what are the biggest treats now for the music industry today? <clears throat> Can we do with them? David? Yeah, actually, uh, there are many, or at least a few of them, I mean, threats. Uh, maybe the first of all, I, I want to mention the capacity losses, which we are not seeing now because, because of the lockdown and the, actually because of the lack of the live experiences, the live performances, we just do not realize that, that so many people are just leaving the music industry. And uh, I've just received, uh, I mean, the local numbers, local estimated numbers for this year 2020 for the music industry in Hungary, we will face uh, around a minus 60, 60 percent loss of the, I mean, the um, the general income of the whole music industry, which is, I mean, a huge. And we are speaking about a country in, within the European Union with a quite generous, I mean, uh, quite large, substantial state funding, like you have been in Italy or Germany or France or everywhere else. And I, I really uh, do afraid that the situation in the US or, or, or anywhere else when the state support is not as prominent as in Europe, it's even worse. So the, the, the harsh reality will 
uh, we will face the harsh reality when this coronavirus crisis is over and we, we plan to back to get to normal. And uh, we just lack the people and lack the resources to, to, uh, to restart the music industry. You're looking for, and I'm not only talking about the artists, I'm also talking about the, all the staff members there, any, any theater and every orchestra is needed this, this highly trained personal. And the, when the <clears throat> hairdresser is already working in a pizzeria, and uh, and uh, you know the lightning professional it just just left the country as at all. So just we will we will see facing these problems. And the second problem I want to mention briefly that the performing arts are not ready to use the digital tools. And I mean the digital experience, like I mean the sports maybe. So the uh, the. The football, the the formal one, and all these 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 great sports, even they are already decades on the screen. They know how to make a product, perfect product for for the consumer before the screens, and we just do not. We make these live concerts and all these is live streaming for free, actually, which is another problem of its kind as well. Uh, and and we just we just make something uh, less valuable than we can do uh, uh, in the life circumstances. So I think I was I'm, I was already a bit longer than I was expected to be, but that this in short this this too is the main main problem, the main challenges now. I think. Thank you very much, David. Uh, I think that also you already uh, started to to answer or to start it team that uh, will be presented by, with the second question. So now the last uh, um, panelist, Davide Fankin, a musician, former member of the European Spirit of Youth Orchestra today, a member of faculty, leader of the French horn section, uh, calling us or joining the the webinar from uh, United States, I hope, I suppose. So, David, uh, let's make a little presentation by yourself and then answer, please, to this question. What are the difficulties that a young musician has to face with today by looking for getting a job in a traditional music institution like orchestras, music schools, or academies, universities? Mm -hmm. Hi, Igor. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, well, as you said, I'm a horn player. Uh, I play with the South Florida Symphony Orchestra, with the Yucatan Symphony Orchestra. Uh, of course, I teach. I'm really proud to be part of SEO as a, as a coach of some of the best young European musicians every year. Um, a part of my French horn career, I'm also, as you said, a young entrepreneur. I I organize music festivals. I have um, a jazz club. And eight years ago, I started a, a web design and development company called Holagora Studio. And I know that seems completely unrelated to music, but it, it's actually not. Um, anyway, uh, going back to the question, since we have such a small time, um, uh, I think music business in general, it's a very challenging and extremely selective uh, industry. Uh, there are very few orchestras, or let's call them uh, traditional jobs, um, compared to the number of highly trained musicians on the market. Uh, so yeah, extremely selected. Um, well, I, I'm not gonna go, uh, well, if you don't know that, if you're not familiar with it, in order to get into one of those orchestras, let's say uh, orchestras, when they have vacancies, they would hold auditions that people would just sign up for and the winner gets the job. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, I've seen auditions of uh, hundreds, hundreds of videos submitted. Uh, the panelists would have to go through them, uh, filter it down to 150 people, invite them to the live audition that would, by the way, last days, and uh, and all of this for one job. And uh, and this would be like a once in a, in a few years opportunity for them. And um, and the worst part is that sometimes those auditions, they are not even for a job, they're for the opportunity to get added to a list of extras that the orchestra can pick from in case they need some. 
So the entire process in general, it's extremely stressful. I mean, especially if you think about the energy, time, the will that uh, each one of those uh, musicians have to put into the preparation of an audition. It is, an audition is for me, and I think for everybody, one of the most stressful things we've done in our lives. Um, to conclude all of this, uh, all this process is even more difficult for young musicians. Uh, they just got out of conservatory, university of academies that they studied in. And uh, unfortunately, we have seen in the past few years, uh, many of those institutions, especially the small ones, kind of disappear. And those were the most important ones because they were the middle step for those students to get out of conservatory, build up some experience, and uh, honestly playing some real life scenarios. Uh, and that experience would definitely like would be 100% needed to get one of those auditions I, I was talking about before. Thank you, Davide. So let's go to the uh, second part, but I will include in the second part also uh, the last one, uh, where everybody who will be invited now to answer uh, has to conclude his, uh, let's say, um, participation with a suggestion or a recommendation addressed to the young uh, musicians and young uh, music artists. So, David, Will the music sector get back to normal after pandemic or we have to face long-term consequences? So, and by considering this fact, what do you suggest to young musicians? Yeah, uh, it's, it's hard to predict. I do not think everything will be get uh, back, back to normal. And actually it's a, it's a problem of its, uh, own because our institutions and our, our thinking and the whole industry is just just want to be desperately again working like it could before the pandemic. I think the young generation they are very you know they are using laptops and smartphones and all the new technologies and YouTube and, and Spotify and whatsoever. Uh, they they will adapting very quick and they have this kind of advantage, uh, which which is a, I think is a great thing because all this industry really needs a bit uh, a bit revolution. Now when we are forced to I mean just forced to not to have all these experiences live experiences we used to have, now we are locked down to our digital reality, and uh, I really do hope this young musicians the young generation will find out how to work with the music content uh, on these digital platforms because it's it's not invented yet that's why I, why what i wanted to say the, before that that when when we have a perfect uh, balanced and perfect uh, uh, almost perfect uh, uh, per, um, i mean uh, customer experience, user experience when it comes to sports. I mean, Roland Garros and the former one, all the sports kind. The, this, the whole ecosystem is working on the digital field now. It's it's only on screens. It's no one really cares in the sports industry when they do that. They cannot sell tickets. They selling all this digital content we are uh, watching on the screens. Uh, we have to invent uh, the equivalent on this, this, on this digital tools and platforms, the classic music, jazz, opera, and all, all this, if possible. If not, then we are facing another problem. Then we are going into a digital era without any uh, competitive digital uh, product because it's only working in life. So this, this will be the biggest question of the next one or two years. Can we transform? Can we make Mozart I mean, digital compatible. Thank you very much, David. So, which new skills and competencies will be required for getting a job in the next future? So, Gabriele Centis, you are invited to answer to this very tricky question. <laughs> More than ever today and tomorrow, musician. You can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. More than ever, today and tomorrow, musicians must be competent in a variety of skills. Strictly music skills, obviously, 
as technical instrument control, reading, interpretation ability, harmonic and composition of knowledge, and whatever. But for every musician, it's important to know different music languages, from classic academic to 20th century music, rhythmic music, jazz, pop, rock, and how to play them rhythmically with groove, with swing, with rolling, and new, new ideas. They have also to know how to use the music application in computer science to play in a recording studio, how to use a microphone to play with the headphone monitoring, to play in an overdub on a recording track, play along uh, uh, with a click track or computer sequencer, to play in a big venue with sound amplification and monitoring, use electronic effect, effects and so on. A musician also be competent or at, at least aware, just to mention a few of things about audio, video, light technology, media production, recording, radio, broadcast and live music production, legal problem about copyright, contracts, social security, artistic project development, logistic strategy, business administration, public relationship, psychology, human relationship, health and mental care. <laughs> Plus practicing. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> if you are a performer. So when everybody has to follow all these uh, uh, new skills, then the question is, uh, where is the time for practicing? Because this is what we have to consider. Uh, the 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 true and the honest uh, the honesty of uh, a performance to be uh, as uh, as close as possible to the original thought that created the masterpiece so this is of course a very challenging uh, situation uh, that will be also a very selective uh, period uh, for many musicians that will some of them will probably um, will be forced to move and to choose another profession. So, uh, Davide Fankin, are new jobs in the music sector possible too? Igor, I believe they're not only possible, they are absolutely necessary. Uh, as it turns out, you know, musicians are highly creative people. And, uh, uh, and I can... And as you know, every musician has their own project that might go from their very small uh, string quartet up to a recording studio or a digital agency, for instance. Um, so unfortunately, uh, what I see the problem there is that unfortunately many of those projects never reach the success they, they, they actually deserve. And I don't think it's because they lack in value. I honestly think it's because we never trained those musicians. They have no knowledge whatsoever of uh, uh, communicating that project, structuring the project, market the project, uh, get access to European funds. What are the documentations needed to even apply for those funds? You know, they have just no idea. We never told them, we never educated them in this in these meaning. Uh, <clears throat> Now, I'm not talking that we should, uh, as you say, I'm not talking, we, we shouldn't turn every musician into an entrepreneur, you know, as you say, like someone, uh, they really like uh, what they do, they really want to get into an orchestra, and that's what they want to do. Fantastic. Uh, there are many other options. And people can even play in an orchestra and get creative anyway. It's not a one or the other situations. Um, to kind of conclude uh, my, my answer. Um, I think to achieve more jobs in the in the music business, I think we just need to give musicians the tools they need, uh, like concerning uh, communication, marketing, like the basics. But those tools, whatever path they choose, whatever they want to do, the string quartet, orchestra, uh, digital recording studio, anything they want to, they have the basic tools uh, to actually let the world know what they're doing and how good they are. Exactly. Thank you very much, David. Yeah. So, uh, Christina, you already introduced somehow uh, the actual uh, policies, but uh, what are the possible developments of the European music policies in the music sector, in your opinion? 
So as I told you, the, the new Creative Europe program is providing for the first time a dedicated line. So it means that Music Moves Europe uh, is, uh, will have a, a more specific and protected uh, space where not only the cooperative action already available, but even special lines dedicated to access to market and to, to training, to training schemes will be supported. More in general, the mobility, uh, now under, under COVID, one of the main concerns for the, for the professionals in performing arts has been to be locked in their own uh, cities or countries with the theater closed. And each country is trying to provide uh, some support for reopening its own situation. But the touring, the international touring, and the touring inside the European Union has always been vital for us. So this second line mobility will be uh, strongly addressed by Creative Europe. Another line uh, has a lot to, to, to say with uh, the, the subject introduced by, by Davide and by David, and it's uh, the copyright. There is something that uh, the single professional can can't afford. And that's up to the European Union, not even to the single member state, but to the European Union to try to create a framework that helps to musicians and to the performing artists and to, to the creator to keep some value to their creation. And that's uh, cope with, uh, with general rules. So the copyright rules, uh, the, this law has been approved yesterday. So in the long list of skills, I'd like to add a, a special attention to maintain a certain amount of rights of your creation. If not, you'll never be able to, to pay the rent for your apartment. Keep not only uh, in mind that your action in orchestra, but keep in mind your copyright uh, rights because uh, this is a key subject. In general, uh, the European Union devoted a, a third, so that the budget has been increased quite, quite in a, quite an important way. Uh, now we have 2.2 trillion of Europe for uh, the next uh, seven years, which is an important increase, but there are always peanuts. So that's why the uh, music and performing arts associations are uh, really fighting to ask their national countries to, 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 to make a kind of reserve for culture, the 2% of the recovery fund, so next generation EU. Uh, these are all subject not only really to be, to be controlled and monitored from the, from, the, from the single citizen, but from the association and the, the network and platform. So my, a uh, suggestion is not only to the participants, but even to the association and to the promoters of team to be part of this process and to continue to support an active control of how the money goes. But my, my final word is just to, to support what Igor said. So first of all, we are expected to perform in an excellent way. Be conscious that um, the selection will be even heavier, heavier than usual, but in any case, uh, high quality found its way to, to, to reach the, the stage. And don't, don't lose your confidence that excellence may pay back and study, 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 never stop to, to, to study. That's not enough, but is a key. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina, for your contribution. So, uh, Paolo Rumitz, you, uh, you spent some years with the youth orchestra. You become a, uh, an additional instrument with your voice, with your telling uh, as uh, a narrator of uh, your personal experiences as uh, a traveler uh, through Europe and not only through Europe. What could you suggest or recommend to young generation so so the young people uh, they have to face this after this uh, covid uh, uh, tragedy a very hard uh, future 
Uh, so I, I have to say that I am a writer, so I'm not a technician, so I can't give technical advices to, to the boys and girls I met. Um, I spent five years with ASIO. Uh, my task was to tell stories while the orchestra was playing. Um, and I, it was a new experience for me, very important one, because I discovered the enormous potential of music as a language. But it was in the same time a frustrating experience because uh, I could understand in a, in a, in a very short time that uh, uh, it was impossible for my words to compete with music. Igor remembers very well that we, he insisted to make me speaking, uh, having in background uh, uh, the music of uh, Jupiter, of Holst, uh, uh, the planets. And uh, I, I refused because I could not at all face the, the, the power of that, of that music. Uh, so uh, that experience for me was uh, uh, a shower of humility. I turned into an instrument like all the others and um, I could uh, test the power of storytelling having in background uh, of music. And, but especially uh, it was an experience to live together with uh, these young girls and boys being in full immersion of music is something that uh, makes you feel better, physically better. Uh, what is un unbelievable is to face, to, to, uh, to follow that transformation in a very, very short time of these boys and girls uh, during uh, rehearsals. Uh, they have, uh, they are the perfect uh, expression of team. When somebody is missing, they substitute him with no problem. And um, another thing that uh, uh, yes, they are digital outside orchestra. They turn into digital young boys and girls when they are outside. But during rehearsals, they are not e digital at all. And I think they are much better when they forget to be, to be digital. Uh, my emotion, <laughs> my emotion is, uh, is such that uh, after the first experiences, when the, the, the tournée begin, uh, I am sad uh, when they, they arrive. I am already sad thinking that in the future they can leave. You know? uh, it, it is very, uh, it's something that has to be felt, to be proved. Uh, I, I suggest many politicians and entrepreneurs to, uh, to, uh, to, to see, uh, staying there, to see that, that uh, team building that I, I, can, I can have seen. They have never seen themselves before. They speak langu different languages. They come from different musical languages. Uh, sometimes they are sons and daughters of countries that uh, are not uh, in peaceful, has not been traditionally in peaceful between themselves. But in a few days, they turn in a unique thing, in complicity, cheerful. The youth orchestra is a phoenix being uh, able to, to die and bear again from its ashes. It is one ensemble that is not sleeping on its uh, laurels, but uh, is uh, 
turning in something new again every year. And I can say every day, I cannot uh, think at any better metaphor of what uh, Europe can be. Thanks. Thank you very much, Paolo. Oh, for uh, starting the last session, uh, just uh, an invitation to all participants. You, are, uh, you have the possibility to participate in a poll. Uh, I kindly invite you to write uh, what is your profession. And if you have some uh, questions that you would like to be submitted uh, to the panelists, please write. You have the possibility to question and answer. So answer and question. And, um, uh, just click the, the proper uh, icon and you questions. So we will try to give you an answer. So uh, suggestion, recommendation, Gabriele. OK. Uh, music two words, two words that's it yeah yeah music suffer the distances it's important don't lose in the solitude of digital world the relationship and the interaction with the real environment and acoustic space with the dynamics and the call of the acoustic instruments and the resonance with the audience with the people and between the musicians itself it's important develop and keep an open mind to every music language, improve and keep alive the international relationship and experiences. Don't stop to improve the personal cultural background and try to experiment different art forms. It helps your musical expression. Play with older and better musicians than yourself. Find your own voice and develop your original music project. With due respect and attention to the tradition, find the new ways, forms, and solutions. We cannot make life longer, but we can enlarge it. Thank this you, is it. Gabriele. Thank you. David Zoldos. Uh, it's hard to really suggest anything. I mean, uh, just saying, keep it up for. <laughs> Uh, keep going. I, actually, we should trust that, um, you know, the music we are working with is uh, 100, 200, 300 years old. So we should not think that it will just disappear and, uh, and the need for the music will remain, of course, in the society. This is a crisis, but, you know, we've seen wars and a lot of terrible things and, and, and you know, there is always, always a revival. But uh, they really have to uh, use the digital tools and and experiment. I mean, I mean, just just they have to find the uh, young musician have to find <clears throat> their own ways how to promote and how to make their music, their own music. So every generation needs to to face their challenges and and find uh, find the answers to their own questions, which are different the questions that we had and all our, 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 our parents and ancestors had before. That's it. Thank you, David. Oh, so, David Fankin. So. Um, last few words. Back, um, before going back to your bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't mention it, please. And uh, last few words, last few words. Um, passion, definitely, 100%. Do whatever your passion drives you to do it. Uh, you will develop like a specific skill set and you won't even perceive it as work. You won't even perceive it as something difficult because it's something that you like to do. You will invest time on those things, on things you like. You will develop very specific skill set that mixed with your music background, your creativity. I, I assure you, there's someone somewhere looking exactly for that skill set that you only you have or very few people have so follow your passion i'm sure you'll be fine thank you very much david let me conclude that the best social distance is to be near and close to each other to do something together to, to trust them yourself so as i'm always saying before uh, is entering the stage to all musicians, don't be perfect, be yourself, 
It means belief in what we are doing because you will find a way. You have the energy, you have the skills, you have everything and you have much more time that we have. So use this opportunity and you will see even after COVID, we will have a, a future. And I'm sure with your help, with your participation, will be another bad one. It will be a splendid future. Thank you very much. To all participants, to all panelists, if uh, do we have, it seems we have some question. Okay, uh, not really. I see Paolo Rumitz would like to say a word. Please. I would also yeah. like to say something at some moment. And Chris too, maybe Christina as well, but let's start with Paolo who started this first. Uh, my opinion is that uh, the tasks, the task of young uh, people now, young musicians, is to build a good storytelling of Europe. So it means to play Europe as a homeland. Uh, nobody better than young musicians can play the beauty of Europe with its rivers, seas, forests, mountains, and in the same time, to tell the tragedy of its history. We made it with Ezio and we tried to say what Europe is. It is paradoxically, nevertheless, to realize that uh, uh, institutional United Europe is not able to produce an emotional storytelling of itself. Um, Ezio tried to fill this emotional gap and I think that as uh, Miho Pogacnik said so enthusiastically, and I must say energetically, uh, nothing better than an orchestra can represent a polyphonic identity of Europe. We have to, uh, to explain to the people that Europe is the land where the sun goes down. It's a big, complicated promontory attached to Asia, which is where the sun comes out. So something simple, something that politicians never say. So please fill this gap. Thanks. Thank you very much. Chris, please talk. Yes, thank you. Uh, just very, uh, just a couple of comments. I, I think it was very, really some very interesting stuff that people were saying. Um, the first I'd like to say is this question of excellence. I think that we must balance excellence with ethics. And of course, we should never try to achieve, uh, stop achieving excellence. But we also have to know why we are being excellent, for whom. And I think that Paolo's uh, proposal about a narrative for Europe is really one of these things about knowing why you want it, what it is that we want to give. Um, secondly, I think there's another example that comes from Paolo's life in general, and that is the importance of travel, of throwing yourself into situations that you have not been in before. This is the greatest learning that there is. I think Davide is doing the same thing. I think that David is doing, all of us are sitting here are somehow products of the experiences that we've had in other places, the development of our so-called intercultural competence. And lastly, I want to say that I don't think it's any longer about how you find jobs in the music sector. It's about creating your own jobs in the music sector. And I think that that's true about all of the cultural field. There are no more full-time for the rest of your life, lifetime contracts at orchestras, at theaters. Uh, th these don't exist any longer, or very few of them. What we need to do is to create our own territory and to fill that territory with our own passion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, Christina. Uh, I remember uh, last time I was speaking with Silvia Costa, she was telling me about the program very similar to Erasmus for uh, musicians and for artists. They have, uh, there is some uh, program uh, uh, helping uh, musicians and artists uh, to move and exchange with other colleagues uh, living in other countries. Yeah, if you want to push me in the technical field, yes, I answer that there is a, a part of program uh, of Erasmus, which is called Erasmus Pro Professionals, 
who helps exactly this exchange. And there is a new program called iPortunus, which is supported again from uh, Creative Europe uh, to help to spend some time traveling and spending time with another institution. And uh, it brings back to me, uh, I'll pick a few of the observations. Yes, we are, we are a kind of summary of the, of the travels and of the, the experience. We, not only we went through, but we, we decided to live in, and that's the story of Paolo, and that's what, uh, what Chris uh, told us back. And again, I strongly share the, the fact that uh, it's not only a matter to push your own ex excellencies. It's not a matter just to try to fight to be the best of the best of yourself. This is a part. But we are in relation. Uh, Europe is a relation. And uh, uh, to be, be part of a process to help the society to evolve, to help our Europe to get stronger, peaceful, able to understand this is part of our excellence. It's not a matter to study in my own room or to be a good citizen. The two things, they, they necessarily interact and become one. And this one is unique and it's you. And this is uh, the future for, uh, for a Europe able to, to have a story, to have a narration, uh, to have a bride, to have a spirit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. Uh... I could also conclude in this way uh, that everybody, if he wants or she wants to have a better society, have to answer by it himself or herself to this question. What I can do for the society that it will be become a better society? And every starts, everything starts from our side. And Micha uh, showed us uh, his way and uh, everybody can find uh, his own way or her own way, uh, how to make this society better. And society will be better when we'll be honest, when we'll be true, when we will speak the truth, not uh, try to sell something, but just help the other and make together with them a winning team. Thank you very much. Uh, Eugenio, I think uh, I I finished my job today. I okay. the, yep. conclusing, yep. the conclusion, and uh, I think that uh, it was a very nice uh, webinar. Thank you to everybody, yep. and hope to meet you soon uh, live.